Annette is in aboard a fishing boat in Alaska, captured an astonishing scene. On the deck lay a giant North Pacific octopus, seemingly searching for something. One of its tentacles found a small hole, a drainage vent on the deck, roughly 10 centimeters tall and 3 centimeters wide. Was it attempting to escape through this tiny orifice? Spectators on site couldn't believe such a feat was possible for the octopus. Yet, right before their eyes, the creature managed to wriggle through the opening, fleeing to the safety of the open sea. Many online skeptics questioned the authenticity of the video, but the footage was indeed real, and astonishingly, this escape wasn't even the octopus's limit. In 1996, scientists conducted experiments in laboratories to test the octopus's ability to navigate through mazes. Within the maze was a gap approximately 2.5 centimeters wide. A 15-kilogram octopus effortlessly maneuvered through it. There were also cylindrical holes suspended in midair, which the octopus could extract itself from using its tentacles. Scientists estimated that the octopus's escape limit was a body size of 60 kilograms, allowing it to pass through a hole of one square inch. How did they arrive at this data? Because an octopus's entire body is as soft as water, with only its beak being a hard structure. Theoretically, if the beak can fit through, the rest of the body can too. It's unbelievable that something of similar weight to me could fit through the mouth of a beverage bottle. According to books, 600 million years ago, humans and octopuses shared a common ancestor, a worm with eye spots. At that time, humans and octopuses went their separate ways. The octopus ancestor chose the path of invertebrate evolution, while our ancestors chose vertebrate evolution. Subsequently, they evolved into cephalopods, employing a neural network, while we evolved into vertebrates with a central nervous system. It's our rigid bones that limit our imagination, just as it's difficult for our central nervous system to comprehend just how intelligent octopuses truly are. The octopus has 500 million neurons, which, although several hundred times less than the 85 billion in humans, is on par with the number found in dogs. Octopuses employ a distributed nervous system with only 10% of their neurons in their central brain, 30% in each of the two visual centers on either side, and the remaining 60% spread across their eight arms. Each arm can autonomously process information, effectively giving octopuses nine brains. To understand this, consider an interesting example. Within the octopus's eight arms, there's typically one with reproductive capability called the hectocotylus. This arm carries sperm, which it injects into the female octopus, completing the reproductive process. However, female octopuses are usually larger than males, with the female of the blanket octopus species being 600 times larger than the male. This creates a challenge for male octopuses during mating. When faced with such a situation, some octopuses will voluntarily detach their hectocotylus, which is a brain with its own consciousness. The detached arm, still containing sperm, sneaks over to the female for fertilization. The scientists liken the sensation of having nine brains to taking eight companions with you on an outing. You only need to convey a vague concept, and they can independently understand and accomplish tasks. Each arm has around 250 suckers, each capable of independent grasping and sensing. In 1998, Japanese fishermen caught a monstrous octopus with 96 arms. It was kept at the Shimane Aquarium in Japan, along with other octopuses with 56 and 85 arms. Was this a result of nuclear radiation-induced genetic mutation or a natural disaster warning? Actually, scientists say it's a normal occurrence due to the octopus's incredible regenerative ability. For instance, the 96-arm octopus had eight hectocotyli, indicating it had detached its arms several times for reproduction or sneaking attacks on females. Each time an arm is detached, two grow back. The same goes for the arms themselves. Cut one off and two grow in its place. This frequent tissue regeneration doesn't lead to cancer and having numerous arms doesn't disrupt the octopus's normal life. Instead, it grows stronger with each detachment. This makes it a true ruler of the ocean, almost like a mythical creature. Fortunately, the genetic lock swiftly deactivated this threat. But what exactly is this genetic lock? Let's first take a look at the octopus's life cycle. This is the story of a photographer named Craig, who two months ago 
released a full documentary following an octopus for over 300 days, titled My Octopus Teacher. On the first day of filming, the octopus was very cautious, hiding in its den and refusing to come out. Craig left his camera at the entrance of the den and swam away. Later, watching the footage, he saw the octopus using shells as shields while attacking the camera. On the 26th day of filming, Craig shook hands with the octopus for the first time. The octopus, like a dolphin, showed remarkable intelligence, and the two beings became friends. Throughout this time, Craig documented the life of his octopus friend. It could change colors even more effectively than a chameleon, smoothly blending with its surroundings like a gradient in computer software. It could mimic other creatures to scare off predators, walk on two legs, and carry shells and coconut husks as shields. On the 125th day of filming, Craig witnessed several sharks chasing the octopus friend. The sharks bit one of its tentacles, engaging in their deadly rolling technique. Despite losing a tentacle, the octopus managed to escape and recover in its den, appearing weak for several days. However, a week later, it ventured out again with a new tentacle grown. On the 270th day, Craig captured the octopus hunting lobsters, adapting its strategy to catch the prey effectively. The octopus learned to manipulate its body like a net, approaching the lobsters from behind and striking with precision. Craig also discovered that the octopus frequently consumed shellfish, despite their hard shells. It did so by exploiting precise small holes in the shells, accessing the muscles inside. This hunting technique, unique to octopuses, involved using the cones at the base of their suction cups to gradually bore holes in the shells and injecting toxins precisely to paralyze the prey allowing the shell to open willingly. On the 304th day, the shark returned. This time, the octopus deployed a new tactic, releasing ink and fleeing into the seaweed. In a surprising turn of events, it swam directly onto the shore, though it lacked the ability to survive out of water. It quickly returned to the sea, gathering shells to armor itself. When the shark attacked again, the octopus, now resembling a Spartan warrior with its shell armor, proved formidable. By the 324th day, the octopus had begun mating, with a male octopus residing in its den. However, soon after, the male disappeared, likely consumed by the female. She then laid hundreds of thousands of eggs in the den, tirelessly tending to them until they hatched. Weakened from the ordeal, she eventually succumbed to a passing shark. This is the life of an octopus, a manifestation of genetic constraints. Their genes dictate a short lifespan, limited reproduction, and solitary existence. Despite their remarkable intelligence and learning abilities, they cannot inherit knowledge from their parents, necessitating individual learning and adaptation within a short lifespan. Unlike humans, who can form social bonds and pass down knowledge, octopuses are locked into a solitary existence by their genetic code. If not for this genetic lock, they might have evolved differently, perhaps even mastering land, Back in 2005, a group of biologists on the shores of Northern Australia stumbled upon a peculiar octopus species. This octopus exhibited the astonishing ability to walk on land and even hunt. The shallow pools along the shore were divided into various sizes, and these octopuses had to spend significant time on land, scouring for prey. If a pool lacked crabs, they'd venture onto land again, crawling to the next pool. Scientists remarked that these octopuses had developed terrestrial traits, resembling the early vertebrate ancestors from 400 million years ago, who began their transition from sea to land. It makes one ponder, could the evolution onto land be the prelude to unlocking genetic potential, just as it was for our human ancestors? And what if, instead of extraterrestrial invaders from space, the threat came from the depths of the ocean? Perhaps behind this scenario, one can imagine the plots of countless science fiction films. All right, that's the end of today's story. See you next time.